So today what we're going to be making is the uh, hearth broom, but the difference is, is that it has a wrought iron handle on it instead of the wood, and we'll talk about how you attach it that way. So today we are doing the wrought iron handle hearth broom. Today we are going to make a hearth broom with a wrought iron handle. So they are beautiful on your uh, fireplace or wood stove. Great for cleaning up once you got the broom on it. Um, but they're very decorative. Uh, these are done by a gentleman that has since retired uh, in the area. I'm going to work one up on this kind of a diamond harlequin pattern. The other ones that I have are spirals. And I do have three of these for sale. And then there won't be any more since he is retired. But if you're interested, check out the webpage and you can buy one there as well as all the other things that you need for uh, broom making. So um, the big thing that you need when, in uh, making a wrought iron handle or any kind of handle that's not wood is you have to have a hole in the end of it so that you have a place to put your nail. That's the big secret right there. Other than that, it's just like tying on any other broom. So let's get started. Uh, if you're just beginning in broom making, please look at the beginning broom making video. It shows you the materials that you need, the tools that you need, and it goes step by step through all the different um, knots that you'll need for tying on your broom and for sewing up your broom. So I won't start there today with that. I'll let you go check out that beginning broom making video. It'll take you step by step through all of them. Okay, so I have my uh, spindle set and I've got my uh, string tied on and I have my uh, nail on here. Actually I'm going to take the nail off for a minute because it's going to slide on me. And I'm going to tighten that up and I'm going to wrap three times. And then I'm going to put that nail in there. Remember that the nail is just there so that this does not slide. And probably it's not going to slide anyways, but you never know. So, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've sorted through my broom corn, and I've got either ones that are kind of short and thick, or thick. And remember that I am right-handed, so I want the broom to go underneath the table and at this point all I'm going to do is just layer this so I don't have to be concerned about if I have an odd or an even amount. I will later but not right now. All I'm doing is I'm putting that inner layer on there and I use what I term uglies. And I'm going to bring that around and I'm going to put that broom corn right on that nail so it doesn't poke me. How's that? So a couple more rows here. You can make sweepers. You can do a couple rows of this and then put your shoulders on if you want. I think for today what we're going to do is we are just going to do the um, one and then put some shoulders on it for a hearth broom. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hide that in there. And I'm going to wrap for three times. Okay, so now once I've got that done, like I said, you can make it a, a judgment call. Do I want a little bit more bulk on this? Well, maybe. Maybe I'll go another round. And once again, because I'm not... Uh, I'm not doing the braid yet, so I don't have to worry about whether I have an odd or an even amount. Okay, I'm going to get a couple more in here, and then I'm going to put some shoulders.
So this is my second layer of drum form. And you can see that these are kind of, they're either thick or they're um, short. What I want is those nice, um, pretty ones on the outside while I'm doing the braid. So I'm going to wrap this for another three or four times. Okay, and uh, when I put the shoulders on, I want it to be, you know, this is going to lay against the wall. So I want my shoulders on this side so that it lays flat. All right, so let me grab a couple more. Okay, so I have my two layers on, and now I'm going to put some shoulders on the side that it's going to hang on the wall. Okay, and I think in this instance I'll put three on. You'll put three or four on. I'm just bulking up that side piece. And then I'll come over on the other side and I'll put three on that. Remember, this is going to get trimmed back again. So, once again, I'm going to wrap it for three times. Or four. You don't want to wrap on top of it. You're going up towards the handle with it and putting it next to it. So, that's about three or four. So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exacto knife and I'm going to trim the stuff off before I put pretties on. You always want to make sure when you're trimming, you're trimming away from yourself, especially when you're using a knife or an exacto box cutter, whatever. Okay, so once I get that trimmed up, hmm, there we go. Um, I'm going to lay in my pretties. Put one in first. Remember, this now has to be an odd amount. And crease it. And then the rest of these I put in by twos. And then I know that I will have an odd amount without thinking, which is good. Or I have them go back and count. So, all the way around, adding the broom corn. And this is going to be a little thicker than a hearth broom. But just felt like if I didn't put these on, that uh, second layer it would be too thin. And I like kind of a stout room, so. So, when, you, when we get to the actual weaving part of this, you'll see that you can only weave up to uh, the, the shortest length. And these are long, so I'll probably quit about right there on these. I think I improved with these. Um, as I went along. I think the first ones that he made for me were kind of short in the handle for a lot of braid. And I tend to put quite a bit of braid in mine. I'm going to shift these around a little bit. So you want to, um, you don't want so much broom corn in there that it's hard to actually do the braid or the weave. So it doesn't hurt to kind of space them out a little bit because when you cinch them down, they get closer. I'm going to do about four rows of this, and then I'm going to start my braid. Okay, so when I do the braid, I want to bring it down a little bit underneath, and then this is the critical part. Use your finger. 
flip it over. It's over and under and crease. Over and under and crease. Let a little bit go. Crease. Crease. Now I'm going to do just a couple rows of this and then I'll speed it up so you can see it um, a little faster than watching me braid the whole thing and then I'll show you how I uh, finish it off with my jerk string and trim it up. It takes you about, on your second row you'll be able to tell whether you don't know how to count or you don't know what odd or an even amount is. <laughs> so. Okay. I can see that I'm on, so I'll put this into fast mode and we'll see when I get done. Okay, so I've decided that that is good and for a couple of reasons because remember I said you can only weave it up to the shortest one. Well, he's getting pretty short and it's starting to cover up the design underneath here. So I would rather that show. So I have my jerk string and make sure that the knot side goes to the right hand for me because I'm right handed and I'm pulling this way. Okay, and I want to make sure that that doesn't get wrinkled or crankled or whatever as I go around here. So I'm going to go for about three rows and I want to make sure that when I come here I make sure, oh yeah, that's straight. I'm not going on top of it, I'm going right next to it. About three or four wraps. And let's do one more. And red was traditionally the color of string used for tying up brooms. Just a little broom over there for you. So I'm going to cut this off the spindle. And I've got my tension held tight with my thumb. I'm going to change that. I'm going to go over here to the loop end. And I'm going to take that string that I just cut and pull it through there. And I switch the tensions on my thumb once again. I come over here to my jerk string and pull it through. So I want to tighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to take my whatever, doesn't matter what, and pull up. And then I'm going to trim that off. So I want to trim these off. You can use what's called a broom saw. I don't. I'll just use an exacto. Put some pressure on it and pop up that broom cone. And that seems to work just fine. Now these little pieces, if I can't get those out, I can. But if I couldn't, I could wait until that broom corn was all dry. And then it would pop right off there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and trim this up. And then we are going to put this in a vise and sew it down. And then let her dry. And your broom is ready to hang by your fireplace or your wood stove for the winter. So not only is it decorative, it's functional. So functional art. Okay, so this little bit of stuff, uh, when it dries, it'll pop off. Same thing with this. I don't know what that is exactly, but whatever it is, when it's dry, it'll pop right off. Okay, so let's... Okay, so I've got my broom and my vise, and I've got it tightened down. I've got my string, I've made my loop, all of which you can see on that beginning basket maker um, video on how to make the, the double loop. And, but for right now, I'm just going to have sew in. So I've gone around it twice and through the loop. And then I'm going to tighten this up. 
Okay, so the open end, I'm going to thread my needle through, and it just, it's easier for me if I bend it and put it through. Okay, so I am going to start on top here and come through. You need to be careful because they are sharp. And I like to go back over that first stitch before I go on. Pull it tight, go over the top of that first stitch, and then you want to go about a fourth of an inch further for your next stitch. So it's kind of going diagonally inside the broom. And probably one to two, three, or one to two, three, yep, two to three rows of stitching this down is usually good. I use wax linen because I have it, but you don't have to have that. You can use hemp, you can use cotton string, you can use just about anything. I just like wax linen, I like how it looks, it tightens up really nice. Um, so it's just my preferred medium for sewing brooms. How's that? So um, I'm going to finish this up and I'll come back and we'll talk about uh, trimming up your broom or letting it be wild. Those are your options. So, so we got the um, sewing done. I just decided to do two rows and now what we're going to do is we are going to make a decision on do we want it wild and woolly or trimmed up. And I think in this case, because it's going on the hearth, we're going to trim it. So the way that I do this is I kind of look and see how far I can trim and figure it's going to be about right there. And there are probably better ways to cut this, like if you have uh, a blade where you just cut it in one swath, but I don't have that. So I just cut it in layers. And that seems to work pretty good for what I'm doing. Is it uh, better to get a nice clean cut? Yeah, but you gotta remember, it is just a broom. So I'm gonna clean that up, or you know, I could have made it stay wild and woolly and just kind of trimmed it up. So giving it a haircut so it made it look better, but I'm pretty okay with this. Okay, so there you go. It's a hearth broom for your fireplace.